How do we know when it's time to listen to the heart's whispers? Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm so happy that you've dropped in to join me for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV, where we learn how to get our dreams into action. studio is Melissa Jane Shaw, actor, dancer, singer, choreographer, and founder of Seven Stage Productions, an award-winning women's-based theatre company based here in Toronto. It's so nice having you here, Melissa. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You wear a lot of hats, all in the arts. Yes. Yes. Um, I think I d diversified myself. Diversification yes. is a great word. Yeah. yeah. It's a great way to uh, stay creative and also just to stay employed. So um, I sort of couldn't, couldn't figure out the one I liked best, so I, I, I dabble in a whole lot of them. Um, and then went into the producing side because I wanted to create more opportunities for women specifically, but also even just for myself. But isn't that uh, often the case too with, with people in the arts is that they often will wear different hats. Uh, in film and TV, you have producers who are directors and actors Absolutely. and writers, and and they they will wear different hats because they love to do so much. Yeah, sometimes it's just practical as well, just right. to get the job done. Right. <laughs> you know, if you have one person that can do two or three jobs, then it's 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 more effective. So you studied dance as a as a child. Yeah, um, I was very active, and my parents put me in gymnastics for starters. And uh, I was getting injured a lot, and so my parents, it was around that sort of preteen age where there was the potential that you can, uh, you can get yourself into trouble if you don't keep a really active teenager busy. So they put me into dance after that. So I was going to the dance school every night and then danced in New York over the summertime. And, um, and then actually decided to go to university for acting, for theater. So I've been doing some kids' TV shows and I've been also going to an acting school throughout high school, so. So tell me uh, about your production company. I mean, this is something that's near and dear to your heart. You um, are dedicated to telling women's stories by women, for women. Uh, so give some some uh, some background. Well, the, the, sh the initial impetus is that there is a gap in the market, so. There is a, a ton, a plethora of well-educated, um, talented, exceptional female actors out there, artists, and there just isn't as many jobs for them. So, you know, statistically I could go into it, but it's, it's pretty boring. All this to say that there needs to be more opportunity for women in the arts. Um, and so where I knew I could contribute, it's where my education is, where my background is, was in theater. And uh, there's a ton of amazing plays that are written by women around the world in English that we don't do here in Canada. Uh, so really starting to research that and, and look for great theatrical pieces by women. There's also women in Canada that it, it, was, it became obvious that you could develop, there was voices that needed to be developed. So that was my original instinct was, I know a lot of great women that should be working more and I think I have the wherewithal and the chutzpah to create a company and get some money behind us and get some support behind us and and um, and just to create more opportunities. So, you know, seven years later and about twelve productions behind us, we're still we're still going at it. What has been your your favorite production or one that has really made an impact in the women's um, in, you, in your women's community? I would probably say um, nine parts of desire you know, had a really broad impact. It, it was a larger cast. There was nine women in the cast. It was really, um, uh, it was a highly political play. It was, you know, about nine women surviving in Iraq um, from ages of nine to 89. It was also a really nice multicultural cast. Uh, there was music involved. It was quite beautiful. It really sent the message that we wanted to send and that we're not doing, um, we're not doing theater purely for entertainment, but also really to impart a message, a social message, a political message. Um, so that was really fantastic. And we also started our internship pro program through that production. because so I fundamentally just needed help. I needed a lot of help behind the scenes. So we brought in a couple of great young women um, 
that really contributed and I know got a lot out of working with us as we did with them. And then we carried on that internship program through the next few productions. So I would say that was sort of a turning point for us. And well, and theaters is, you know, not, it's very difficult to, yeah. to make that, uh, to have a life that's sustainable yeah. um, with, with um, you know, acting in, in theater. However, uh, you've, you've done something very interesting for, for women. Why tell women's stories specifically? Well, because we have stories to be heard, and the canon of theatrical work is largely male. So uh, there's a missing piece. There's a missing piece of the puzzle, and a puzzle that, you know, half of our population, uh, it's relevant to half our population. In fact, it's relevant to all the population. It's relevant to men as well. Men benefit from hearing women's stories as well. Um, and by women's stories, I, I, I mean specifically from a woman's voice, largely writing. Um, and also lead characters, and also women directing, women producing, women in leadership positions, um, so, so that we can broaden the scope of what we're hearing out there. Um, and so we can strive towards equality in that, in that industry. Um, I also think there are different types of stories than we're used to. Uh, the male story tends to be a little bit more linear. There's, uh, we understand stories certain ways that are uh, driven by a format that's very male, and women's stories are told differently. Um, it tends to be, you know, largely more collective. Um, it also might not follow the same linear lines. It's, uh, it's a different way, it's a different voice, often, which is one that I think is really interesting and relevant. Who's your very favorite playwright? Oh, good question. And I will be totally biased and I'll say one of my favorite Canadian playwrights who's also somebody, one of the founders of the company and somebody that I work with a lot is Rosa Laborde, who, uh, she's just got a great voice. I've always loved her work. I've known her since I was 16. And she just, uh, she's very poetic. She writes from a very female place. Um, and I just love, I love the storytelling. All right, will, will you be writing a play one day? Can we expect this you? know, from I you? never thought, all the things that you never think you're going to do. I have this real desire for stories of, that are in me to be told. Um, but I also don't want to be presumptuous in the sense that writing is very difficult. People spend years at school, people spend years honing that craft. So uh, I think I might just have to take a stab at a story I want to tell and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Risk the failure. So you know that the, the old adage, fear the, feel the fear and do it anyway, we, actors say this all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you deal with that fear when it comes up? Well, fear can be, uh, it can be your friend and it can also be your foe. So I think you have to be Machiavellian about your fear and make it your friend. <laughs> um, it's not, you know, fear can really get in the way. So I think you have to kind of look, I, call, I say, look the beast in the face acknowledge that it's there, and then use it, because usually fear can generate um, energy as well, uh, can and generate uh, good energy, and uh, energy that really engages you and makes you incredibly present, which for most of my work is really important, which is to be in the moment, um, and to let whatever that fuel or fear is really um, make you present and um, interesting a lot of the time. Uh, when you're in, when you're doing things that are a little bit more intellectual or cerebral, so, or when you're in a position of leadership, so if I'm choreographing a show or if I'm directing, um, fear, you kind of have to hide it because people smell it and they want to feel like they're in good hands. So Melissa, if there was a young woman that came to you and said, well, I want to follow a career path just like yours, uh, what would your greatest advice be to her? Uh, I would say learn as much as you can, take as many classes as you can, mentor as many people as you can um, so that you can arm yourself with as much skill as possible. Uh, I also use uh, Malcolm Gladwell's term, the, the 10,000 hour rule, which sometimes in our business gets lost because uh, a lot of people think it's a game of chance, which in some respects it can be, especially with film and TV where your appearance comes into play a lot. Um, but for theater, and if you want to create things and do anything exceptional, it's a lot of time and work and dedication and uh, resilience, because there's a lot of rejection, 
and perseverance. How do you deal with that, that rejection? You have to really love yourself <laughs> enough that you don't need approval from other people. How do you support yourself through, through following this dream of yours? Uh, well, you end up working for a lot of different companies and a lot of different people, uh, or at least I do. Um, I've been really blessed and lucky to work with uh, the Rose Theatre in Brampton. I've choreographed now 15 shows, big main stage musicals with them, and I get a lot of enjoyment out of that. It's very challenging, uh, but it's really uh, honed and, and you know massaged my leadership skills, which I'm really appreciative for. And, I work for a group of really great guys there. Um, I also work with lots of different theater companies. So for example, uh, I'll be working with Theater Gargantua, which is uh, a movement, largely movement-based, uh, creative, collective creation theater company. And I'll be doing a two-hander, developing a show with them. And, um, uh, and then I also work with my company La Rouge Entertainment, which is a corporate entertainment company that myself and my partner Jamie Holmes founded. So it, it's way more commercial than what I do with Seventh Stage. And it's my Good to Know Minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. My success tip would be to really know your strengths, hone in on them, and to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Uh, because you're always more interesting being an exceptional you than a version of someone else. And that's good to know. For more information about Extraordinary Women TV, my guests, and to watch past episodes, I invite you to visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. And I'd love to stay in touch with you. Join me on Twitter for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, we can connect at Extraordinary Women TV. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.